everyone, it's James here from TSR Jivey Talks Tech. Since finally getting around to opening my studio up for some bookings, I've been asked one question time and time again. What DAW do you use? And my normal response is Pro Tools because that is my DAW of choice. And time and time again I hear, oh, if only you use Logic. So I've bitten the Pro Audio bullet and I've got myself a copy of Logic Pro. Only the demo at this stage, as Apple very kindly give me 90 days to evaluate the application before I have to part with any hard earned cash, which is great. Now there's a bit of a running joke. When Paul and I go to trade shows like NAMM, or any trade show for that matter, it would appear at least that I know quite a lot of people. And the joke is that I know them all in the same way. We used to work at Avid. And while I was recounting this story, I bumped into an old friend who, yes, you guessed it, used to work for Avid. And he said, come over and check out our new controller for Logic Pro. Do you see where this is going? So to cut a long story short, I've just got my greasy mitts on the new Panorama Channel Strip Controller CS12 by Nectar. This is a dedicated USB controller for Logic Pro. There are plans to support other DAWs in time, but at the moment, Nectar are focused firmly on the Logic Pro user community. Now this is great, as it means lots of user feedback, and in turn, lots of user requested features can be added to the feature set, which is not always possible when you, as a developer, are trying to keep users of all DAWs happy. However, I'll admit that I've never been a massive fan of hardware controllers, and over the years, I've tried them all from the Slate Raven to Pro Control, from the SSL UF8 to the Euphonics, later Avid's Artist Control and Mix. I've fallen out of love with all of them. I just find the learning curve too steep and the rewards are not great enough to keep my right hand permanently off the mouse. So let's find out together if the Nectar CS12 can not only convert a Pro Tools user to Logic Pro, but also help me get over my trust issues with controllers and help me get my head around a new DAW, as I've not used Logic since Logic Platinum days. Right off the bat, installing the CS12 was a doddle. Once you register your serial number at the Nectar website, there are just two small files to download and install, and the rest happens for you. No need to dive deep into Logic Pro menu pages or manually assign MIDI, Yukon, or other third-party control formats. It just works. This is in part due to a small piece of software called Control Core that handles all communication between Logic Pro and the CS12 and vice versa. Now Control Core is not a wrapper. It's not getting in the way and causing crashing like other third party apps might have done in the past. It's installed on your machine and if you never want to go looking for it, it will just sit there and do its thing, seamlessly allowing CS12 to talk to Logic Pro. I noticed there was a firmware update available, so I also did this, and again, this was a doddle and not a technical challenge. Then all I had to do was launch Logic Pro, and the CS12 just sprang to life, populated by all the tracks and plugins of the Logic session, which I'd stolen from Paul, who is a lifelong Logic user. So that's the getting started experience. Let's take a look at the layout of the Nectar CS12. Far left, we have the 100mm motorized fader, and next to this, we have a six segment stereo LED meter strip. Next is an encoder, which is first and foremost our pan control, and we have our channel arm, solo, mute, and select controls. Select, I'll come back to later. In the center of the unit, we have our TFT display. This is where we get all our visual feedback about plugin parameter settings and selections. Below the screen, we have four bank or page buttons, and to the right, we have the zoom pot, allowing us to zoom horizontally or vertically with the shift button depressed. We then have the tempo button, which allows us to tweak the tempo of the session, or a host of other features, which are made available by holding down the shift key, and the data stroke menu pot, which allows us to access the CS12 utility menus. Below the screen, we have the main transport controls, the markers and function keys, like mixer on or off, plug-in display, or the magnifier or find mode, 
More on this shortly. We can also navigate around the session using the arrow keys to switch tracks. And while all of this is great, it's the right side of the CS12 where we really get to take control. The CS bit of the CS12 stands for channel strip, and that's what we find next to the screen. The top button in the strip allows us to toggle between insert effects 1 to 8 or 9 to 16, depending on how many inserts we have on that channel. And as I navigate through the channels, you can see the screen updating with the current selected track plugins. Under the plugin buttons, we have the send button, which brings up the track assigned sends for that particular channel. And we have the channel button. Now each of these buttons auto populates the 12 colored encoders or four buttons, or however many buttons or knobs are required to control that particular plugin. In the case of the Logic EQ, we have eight bands across two pages. Color is very important to CS12, and by learning the color codes for each type of processor, you can quickly work your way around a session. Blue, for example, is EQ, red is dynamics, and so on. You can also bypass some or all of the plugins in a strip by using the shift key, which dims the relevant plugin button or buttons. I think it's fair to say that Nectar have done a great job of mapping all of the Logic plugins and a great many of the popular plugin brands, such as Universal Audio and FabFilter. But as we all know, there are about a billion plugins out there. However, CS12 and its amazing Control Core host software just gets on and maps these plugins across the pots and bathes us in a nice blue glow, which we can tweak as we go if we wish. There is also a very active Nectar user community who are creating and sharing plugin maps for the more rare or bizarre plugins, which the team at Nectar have just not got around to yet. So how is the Nectar CS12 in use? Well, for a non-Logic user, this thing is an absolute godsend. I've not had to learn a new DAW at all. I've just followed my nose and got right on with mixing. A bit like I would if I was using a tape machine and a console. I've hardly looked at the screen at all. CS12 is a good solid piece of kit. It's not metal, but that's not something I'm overly bothered about. And it's been very well made and looks great on a desk, or in my case, on the desk. The fader, encoders and buttons all feel good and are nicely responsive. The screen is clear and bright and the color coding is excellent. In this video, I've just covered the basics of what CS12 can do, and it does it really well, with no faff, no drama, no dropouts or glitches or any nasty stuff. However, there are a couple of really cool features that I'd like to show you. Select mode allows you to select plugin parameters, either with the mouse or with a twist of one of the control pots on the CS12, then take control of that parameter with the fader or the pan pot, either in normal or fine mode for accurate control. Fine mode works on your level fader, pan pot, plugin controls, or even your aux sends, allowing you to dial in what you need exactly as you need it. Single point automation is an automation mode and is something that all DAWs and DAW controllers need to embrace. There is nothing more frustrating than the amount of data that is created when doing basic automation. Hold down the auto button and turn the data slash menu pot to single point fader only. An automation node is now created at the start of the change and at the end, making automation editing a great deal easier. It's not gonna work for every automation situation, but most of the time, this is all I need. I'll be honest, I was really worried about making this video, as, as you can tell, I'm not a Logic user. But with the Nectar CS12 on my side, it turns out I don't need to be. I can run a session and mix with no real need to reach for the keyboard or mouse. Now CS12 is not designed to replace said keyboard or mouse, and there are plenty of times when you're gonna be wanting to reach for them, when doing more involved editing or MIDI programming for example. CS12 is not trying to eradicate the mouse or keyboard from your desk, it's there to complement them and allow you to work faster and smarter, or in my case, get any work done at all. For more information on the Nectar Technology CS12 along with their full range of controllers, check out the website or click the link below and if you enjoyed this video, please do hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell to be kept up to date with all future content from TSR, Jivey Talks Tech. But for now, my name's James Ivey, and I'll see you again very soon.